In today's toy review, we're having a shocker. <laughs> no, seriously, it's 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 the shocker. We're continuing our Spider-Man Retro Wave 2 figure reviews. We've already looked at Hobgoblin and the Ben Riley Spider-Man time now. Probably a little look see. Look see, underpants see. The shocker. One of my absolute favourite B list, C list, D list Spider-Man villains. I love Shocker. Any kid who grew up in the 2000s has beaten the living snot out of this dude in every Spider-Man video game because he's the one villain where when it comes to movie adaptations or what have you, they always go, yeah, this guy will never be in the film, so make him a boss in the video game. <laughs> and then he was in Spider-Man Homecoming. We got two versions of him, the Montana version and the Herman Schultz version. Um, this is Herman. Shocker's vibro suit allows him to blast through solid metal or hurl long-range vibrational punches. But they've yet to help him defeat his eternal nemesis, the amazing Spider-Man. Illustration there, depicting him in the... Uh, similar to the animated series of the 90s style. Not quite, but close enough. His costume is based on that version of Shocker, though. Um, which is great, because he comes <laughs> in the same wave as the symbiote Spider-Man. So, memesters out there, if you want to recreate the I'll follow you to the end of the earth! You now have a chance. Uh, in action figure form. Uh, look at him. Look at him. He looks so good. I can't wait to open this bad boy. The only shocker I had for years growing up was part of a display. The Toy Biz Spider-Man Classics line. One of the Spider-Men had a background, like a display stand, where Shocker is in the stand and, like, webbed up. That is the most I've ever had of the Shocker, so I'm so delighted to finally get one, um, and all of his quilty glory. He's in the same wave as the Mark I Armour Spider-Man, very 90s, Hammerhead and Symbiote Spider-Man, who we've all yet to look at, Hobgoblin and Ben Riley Spider-Man we've already looked at, just, oh, hello, hello Herman, I can't wait. His Kung Fu Grip action homage panel shows that you can switch his hands, which is true. Uh, shall we see what he looks like? I, I, I very much would like to do that. A moment of yoga with Herman, or rather an excuse for me to sort of show off his articulation in a very simple, straightforward way. The shocker bends at the ankle and pivots at the ankle. He has a very well-concealed calf rotation, which only overlaps ever so slightly because it's under the silver top of the boot itself. Great idea. Makes it easier to disguise. He has a double joint in the knee. For some bloody reason, the plastic used on his knee joint and elbow joint is a lighter colour than the plastic used for his thigh uh, and arms, respectively. Very odd choice there. Um, he has a swivel at the top of the thigh and his crotch movement is fairly... Um, fluid. He's got a lot of range there. He has a waist rotation which is not hampered by the belt which though a loose piece sits in a bracket on the upper half of his waist so don't move it up and down if you can help it. Keep it in position. But it has a nice little overlap of the two pieces making it look more like a worn piece of clothing that's draped on him and not just you know a thing that's been glued on. He has a decent ab crunch. Oh my god. Uh, his arm moves round and in at the shoulder. He has a nice bit of articulation at the top of the upper arm. He's got very big biceps, double joint in the elbow, and his wrists rotate at the lower arm. No direct wrist posability because of his gauntlet, but we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, Herman also has a fairly decent peg uh, and ball jointed neck which allows for a decent enough range of movement <clears throat> and because of his sculpt keeps him looking quite sinister. Colour scheme, he's got a lovely bit of texturing on the boots which are sort of like a brownish red that carries through with all the red, usually red accentuated parts of his costume. The metallic silver of the gauntlets, the top of the boots and the belt look really nice. The yellow is gorgeous, it's nice, it's, it's a little dulled compared to the other figures in the retro wave who are all a little more colourful but that kind of works in his favour in a way because it makes him look less like a clown uh, and more like someone who would blend into both your comic book and retro collections of Marvel Legends. Uh, there is very little paint bleed, but the sculpt uh, of the suit is subtle and lovely and very nicely done. The head sculpt is great. He's got a proper, like, proper scowl going. And you get to see part of Shocker you very rarely see, which is the back of the helmet, or uh, the back of the mask, which, yeah, goes down in a point. But, um... 
It's great. Like, he's got a... Even though he's wearing a mask, you can see the scowl that's going on there. Well, that is a great little bit of sculpting. The gauntlets. Yes, there is no articulation in his wrists because of the gauntlets are the way they are. But that's where the spare hands come in. In the case of Herman, his spare hands aren't spare hands. They're spare wrists, giving you the option to have either open palms, like mid-action stands, or more neutral if you just want them by his sides. Uh, and they're really nicely sculpted, and the paint is decent on them. Or, of course, if you want them to be the way they are, then we have visual shocker, sort of like comic book uh, visual effects. They're slightly translucent, as you can see when I put my finger behind them, which is nice. But you put them around the, the, the hand, you see. Um, if I can get it through. And then you just clip the wrist gently into those brackets. And it creates the effect of him about to send out a vibro shock blast, like firing them off at Spider Man. Let us take a look at him in action. Ooh. Herman, you beauty! He looks so good! Oh, this makes me really happy. I've always wanted a shocker, and to get one, he was just so well sculpted. Like, just come on. And I, I like the fact that they've sort of stuck to their guns, as it were, like with Herman. He's always been a bit bulkier. He's always definitely put in some more work in the comics to sort of make himself more athletic and physically... Um, intimidating in an attempt to be taken more seriously. So the fact that he's got quite a bulky figure is not only in keeping with the animated series style of the 90s, but just like, he makes for a great shocker figure. I've always wanted a shocker. And now I've got one. And I'm really happy with him. Out of the three figures we've looked at so far, this dude's my fave. What do you think of the shocker retro style Marvel Legends figure? Do you like him? Do you think he looks pretty good? Do you think he looks comfy in his quilted costume? Let me know down in the comments below. If you want to fund any future toy reviews, you could go to my PayPal link or Amazon wishlist down in the description. No obligation, obviously, but if you want to do that, you get a shout out and my undying gratitude. Oh dear. Uh, and aside from that, you can help out by just commenting, liking the video, subscribing if you haven't already, turning on the notification bell if you enjoy my toy reviews. Do you find my toy reviews helpful? Tell me in the comments down below. Um, Coming up next, we are <laughs> continuing the 90s-ness of all this. We'll be taking a look at the Mark I Armor Spidey. Wee Let's hope that we don't get any nasty shocks. Ha ha ha. Hmm, Herman.